So hello everybody. Okay. My name is Kayvon. I'm representing myself and my lovely wife and team partner Elna is sitting there. She'll be joining me for the Q&A. Our product is called Thermoring. Thermoring is a plastic ring that sits around the stove's burner and when hot it changes color to red to warn the users of a hot surface. This product was initially uh, designed with elder users in mind, but I think that everybody could benefit from such a device. Um, so why did I choose to focus on uh, cooking? Well, cooking is particularly important for us when we get older. It is important for a couple of reasons. First, it creates a balance in our lives. It creates rhythm in our lives. It uh, tells us to plan for the day, get out and meet new people and it also contributes to us he eating healthier. Um, I, uh, we started this research project as a school project and our research process was roughly based on the human-centered design toolkit by IDEO. Um, the main parts, the most fruitful parts of our research involved focus groups and uh, interviews and in context immersions, which is uh, in-depth interviews at uh, r r participants on living space. This is an example of uh, observing a cooking session up close at Alma Villa of San Francisco, where we watched Betty and Ada uh, prepare a, a delicious meal. This is uh, when we first realized how difficult it might be for older users to interact with an older electric stove that doesn't have uh, warning signals. And this is another um, observation in the in-context immersion uh, at Una Apartments in Berkeley when we interviewed uh, both elderly residents and also uh, physically impaired uh, residents. So after these uh, initial qualitative research, I came back with a couple of uh, really interesting design problems and opportunities. And uh, I was focusing on the cooking part of the cooking process because we first look at, looked at cooking as a holistic process that starts with shopping and ends with cleaning up. And uh, my main focus at that point was to design a better, safe, safer cooking device. So naturally, as an industrial designer, I started um, doing lots of different sketches and coming up with all these futuristic ideas of innovative cooking devices that could bring about a more safer and more enjoyable uh, cooking experience for the users. But after a while of doing this, I came to realize that I am trying to create this really futuristic, complicated device that is able to monitor everything and even share that experience online with other users and I'm adding all these features. But uh, how many of these users that I just talked to are actually going to buy this? I think a uh, stove is, uh, upgrading a stove is a particularly big investment. And not everybody's up for upgrading their stove to a newer, modern, safer one. So uh, I try to address the problem of safety in a simpler manner. I turn to universal design principles and I try to uh, come up with, an, uh, with a design that could solve the problem at a low cost, easily installable easily usable, intuitive, perceptible, equitable. And I think the low cost factor is what's often missing from the list of universal design principles. Because what good or how universal is your product if no one can afford it? And <clears throat> so with those in mind, I went back and uh, I created um, <clears throat> personas based on our findings or people that we had met in the research phase and we created scenarios and walked those personas through those scenarios we call this storyboarding and uh, it was not um, uh, it was uh, <coughs> after a while uh, we discovered uh, similar patterns coming and uh, 
So I'm going to talk to you about one of those, which is, for example, uh, imagine an older lady who is trying to cook in a cluttered kitchen space. She doesn't find enough space on her counters, so she starts using the smooth uh, top of her uh, cooktop for cooking. And the edge of her cutting board catches fire because it's going on a burner. The burner might be off, but because it's an electric burner, it might still be hot from a previous cooking. That example is only property damage, but it might be worse. Imagine if she has lack of balance and she grabs at the top of the surface to gain her balance. Imagine if she has uh, peripheral neuropathy, which is basically uh, losing sense of uh, touch, and it takes her a couple of extra seconds to realize that she's put her hand on the hot surface. So these scenarios came about really often in our, uh, in our storyboards. And it was not long before we realized that the uh, electric stoves could really uh, use an upgrade. So with these scenarios in mind, um, <clears throat> I tried to, uh, to address this problem with thermochromic plastic, basically trying to uh, design a device that would easily change color when heated. So. How many of you have seen these mugs that turn that change color when you pour hot coffee into them? A lot of people. So, uh, thermochromic pigment is what's used in those products. You can infuse thermochromic pigments with plastics or ceramic or based on your application, different material, and they have different activation temperatures. So you can get that effect of color change on different temperatures. And this was what my concept was based upon. It was a plastic uh, ring. At, at that point, it wasn't a ring. It was a, it was a piece of plastic put on the side of the stove and with a magnet underneath it so it could be easily removed for washing, easily installation. And um, so with that in mind, I tried to create different forms that would go around the stove's burner. This was one of my initial ideas, but I created this form of a gingerbread man, and it and they would have a name on their chest, which would be revealed when hot. And I was thinking many people would like to get this because it was emotionally stimulating, I, saw, I thought, and they would pick the names of their children or grandchildren. But it turned out that not many people would like to put their children on a hot stove. <laughs> so, so that was a fail. <laughs> so I turned into other shapes and thought, well, if I can't uh, design something that's really interesting and pretty, might as well at least design something that's in line with the cooktop. Uh, and so I turned into forms that were simple, modern, symmetric, that were at peace with the aesthetics of the stove. I uh, created mock-ups, cutouts, I tried them, evaluated them with a group of senior residents at Almavia, and uh, based on the feedback and uh, comparing these forms against each other, I came to the conclusion that a ring would be the perfect shape because it is uh, you can see it from all different angles. It is symmetric. It is at peace with the aesthetics of the soap. When it's cold, it's hardly noticeable. And when it's heated, it is heated from all directions equally. So it changes color evenly. And so I tried to make it. I, I created prototypes with silicone rubber. I chose silicone rubber because of its resistance to heat and its flexibility to adjust to different cooktops. And I <clears throat> first, uh, my initial uh, my initial prototypes, such as these ones, were sitting at the periphery of the trim ring of the stove. So they had a long delay to get hot because they were so distant from the cold. So I made them thinner and brought them closer to the inside of the stove. And this is a video of the thermal ring in action, which I'm going to play when we're doing the q and And I'm going to end with some statistics for you about the importance of this product. 43% of all house fires are from cooking. Within those 40% fires, 57%, it's by far the leading cause, are caused with cooking, uh, with a stove top, sorry. And uh, for non-fire burns and injuries, 
more than 16,000 visits to the emergency room were reported in 2012 because of um, uh, cook, st uh, cook stoves and electric ones are the leading ones. More than 33% of residential fire deaths are 65 years and older. And this is the fire death rate. I'm sorry, I, but I think I'm you're in there. there anyway. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and if <it's, coughs> I would like to invite my uh, teammate <laughs> to the podium for Q&A. And if it's okay, I want to play the video while we uh, do the Q&A in the background. Okay. Presentation wise, let's just keep it like this to make it clear for everybody. Katie and I are going to just take it in turn to get a QA. What a fantastic presentation. I'm not a judge, but it's up to you guys to now ask questions. If we have, we've got five minutes, and then we have a time we're going to turn it over to the rest of the audience. So, do questions from, yeah, please, Richard. Uh, I'm just curious how standardized are the size of, how standardized are the size of rings? I mean, my sense is they come in different sizes, sure. and right. would that be a challenge? Great for, question. Uh, when, uh, we're looking at the common stove types in the market, there are at least three different sizes. But because this product is flexible, I have one here with me and I can showcase it uh, during lunchtime. And it's so simple to build, I think it's, it could easily be uh, casted into different sizes. Were they, te were they tested on gas stoves at all? No, this is uh, strictly meant to strictly be electric. used on electric stoves. Under 40 bucks, hopefully. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you tested it some, or you uh, talked with residents at Alma Via. Yes. I wondered if you have tested it with someone who has cognitive impairment um, to get a sense of is it just intrinsically obvious that the red means it's hot and you shouldn't touch it, or? If you had a chance at me, I'm not sure if the residents actually had cognitive impairment. Yes, well, not at Alma Via, but we did test it with a couple of different people with cognitive and physical impairment. The Alma Via Center is an assisted living center, and the residents there are not allowed to cook for themselves. Um, but yes, I, I think uh, the, the red was uh, my first choice because it's widely recognized as danger. Sorry, uh, you mentioned a, about a $40 price point for four burners. Um, without giving us your secrets, what's your cost of goods on something like that? Is the technology very expensive? That's what I'm getting it's at. a pretty simple technology. Casting silicone rubber is relatively easy. It's uh, compression molding, and you can use um, what they call um, waffle makers. Uh, it's, uh, it's like a sandwich maker. You pour the silicone in, heat and pressure, and it's a simple ring, so there's not that much to it. And the material is pretty inexpensive. Yeah. So we're getting good margins. <laughs> <laughs> how, adher how adherent are the rings? How easily are they dislodged when someone slides a pot across the, the, the burner mechanism? You want to answer that? Um, so your question was, would it slide when, you're, when you use a pot? Uh, well, we have very tiny magnets on the back that you can see in the prototype. So that would help keep it in place. And also the rubber itself is in a way when you put it on a burner, because of the rubber quality, it doesn't move that much. It doesn't slide that much itself too. And it's relatively thin, so you can place the pot on it, you can slide on it. Yes, that's, that's correct. Uh, Chuck, we have a question here, and then over to it. Yeah, follow up to the question. Um, are the rings flammable? No. <laughs> <laughs> does the material have a lifetime? I mean, after a certain number of uses, does it sort of wear out and need replacement, or does it just go forever? Um, well, hopefully, with the product, with the prototypes that I have right now, they're all being used several times, and there haven't been any, um, you know, any lifetime issues. 
uh, different types of silicone have different resistances and I'm trying to use the best ones in the market in terms of resistant and uh, because they're not sitting directly on the coils which are I guess 400 to 50 to 500 degrees so they're a little bit colder on the periphery of the stove. Okay, so one more minute, we're going to get a couple more quick questions and I know there was one at the back and then there was uh, Elizabeth. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just new stoves have indicator lights. What fraction of sort of stoves out there don't have indicator lights and would need your product? Well, the newer ones all have indicator lights, but uh, the older electric stoves that are currently on the market, and I don't have the numbers for that. I tried to get numbers for that, but I couldn't get any. But um, I think they're relative. I mean, I think, I'm sure that all of us have seen those stoves being in use around us. Great, we are out of time. Thank you very much indeed.